securing print servers. Up until Windows Vista was released, not a lot of change in the area of print security in the last few releases of Windows, and these new security changes have also been introduced into Windows 2008. In Windows 2008, we're now able to utilize a server core build to reduce the attack surface of our computer, and this build also extends to running as a print server as well. Now, although we're not gonna build a server core installation here in this video, as we do have other videos where we discuss server core, but to help you along the way, if you plan on racing ahead, you can see here we've included a list of the common commands that you'll use to administer your server core print server, so you can go off and take a look at them. Now, like with earlier versions of Windows, print sharing is handled by the server message block protocol or SMB version two, which is an extension of the common internet file system. Since SMB provides the basis for file and print sharing and other network operations, it's important that this is as secure as possible. So Microsoft configured SMB to support digitally signing packets to prevent them from being modified whilst being sent to the destination using what's known as a man in the middle attack. There's also a new feature that was introduced in Windows Vista and it's here in Windows 2008, and that's the point and print policy. This is a group policy setting which helps you configure restrictions on your printing environment, but it only works for Windows Vista and Windows 2008 machines. So if you want to maintain the most secure printing environment possible, it really means ditching all of those older machines and updating to Windows Vista and Windows 2008, which will probably occur over time. But for now, if you have these operating systems in your network, you can take advantage of it. We're also going to talk about printer shares on domain printers and see how we can lock those down to prevent anyone from printing. And finally, we're going to talk about relocating the print spooler as well. So let's go and switch over to a Windows 2008 server and we'll begin by talking about configuring SMB to digitally sign our print communications. Windows 2008 domain controllers are protected against man in the middle attacks by requiring data sent between two hosts to be encrypted. But for any communication occurring that isn't on a domain controller, the default is to not encrypt it. So if we click on start and we go to administrative tools and then launch the group policy management console, on the left, we'll expand our forest, and then we'll expand domains, and then we'll expand our domain, winstructorlab.com. And if we expand domain controllers and then right click on our default domain controllers policy and choose edit, in our group policy management editor under the computer configuration heading, we'll expand policies, window settings, security settings, local policies, and then we'll select security options. Now on the right hand side, if we scroll down a bit, and we'll just expand this window, it's this policy here, Microsoft Network Server Digitally Signed Communications Always, is what's ensuring that our domain controllers are using SMB. So as we can see, this policy is enabled by default for our domain controllers, but if we want to configure this policy for our print servers, then we'll need our clients to support it or they won't be able to contact our print servers. So this means that you'll need to be running Windows 2000 clients or higher, and anything earlier than that won't support SMB. Now, SMB does have an additional overhead required because it needs to encrypt the data, and Microsoft say that it can downgrade file serving performance by up to 15%. So your performance will be affected, but your security will be higher. So let's go and close this. And if we go and right click in our default domain policy and choose edit, and we'll go to policies, windows settings, security settings, then local policies, and we'll select security options. Now again, if we go and scroll down and we'll locate the same policy, Microsoft Network Server, digitally signed communications always, you can see that this policy has not been defined. So if you do want to define this, you'll need to right click, choose properties, and then set this to enabled. But again, before you go and do this, just make sure that your clients support it or else you're gonna have trouble with older machines. All right, well, the next thing that we'll look at is the new point and print feature of Windows Vista and Windows 2008. Point and print is a new feature that automatically downloads and installs a printer driver when a user connects to a shared printer and it will also automatically update the client's printer driver if a newer driver is installed on the print server. So that way you can be sure that your clients are using the correct driver 
which may not only offer new features, but any undesirable bugs may have also been sorted out within the driver itself. Now, an added plus is the fact that you as the administrator don't have to install that driver on hundreds of machines as the policy is going to take care of that for you. So whilst we're here in our default domain policy, let's go and take a look at where we'll find these point and print objects. And since these are user policies, we'll find them here under the user configuration heading. So if we expand policies, and then we'll expand administrative templates, control panel, and then we'll select printers. In the right hand side, we've got a bunch of different policies we can configure based around printing. Firstly, at the top, we have browse the network to find printers policy, which is not configured by default. If I just change this to the standard view so we can see these. Now, if you do set this policy to not configured or enabled, it means that users can use the add printer wizard to add a printer by simply displaying a list of the printers on the network. However, if we right click on this policy and then choose properties and then set it to disabled, then users won't be able to search the network for printers using Windows Explorer and the add printer wizard will not display a list of network printers. Now the next policy that we'll look at are point and print restrictions policy, which again is also not configured by default. In fact, all of them are set to not configured by default, but this policy lets us define which print servers the users applying this policy are able to connect to. So if we go and enable this policy, we can enter in the name of the servers in this box here. So for example, we could enter in dco1.winstructorlab.com and then we could separate additional names if you want by adding in a semicolon. So we could add in dco2.winstructorlab.com, for example, and so on. Now, we can also check the top box here to force users to only be able to connect to these servers if we like. And we can also force users to only be able to point and print to machines in their own forest. Now, when we use the point and print feature, the drivers for the printer will be automatically installed on the client from the print server. So we can choose to either show a warning and an elevation prompt, and that's a user account control style prompt, or we could choose to not show it at all. Now, if we go and scroll down a little bit further here, we can also utilize similar options for when a print driver is being updated. We could choose to show a warning in an elevation prompt, show a warning only, or do not show anything. Now, the next policy that we'll look at is only use package point and print policy, which is only for Windows Vista and Windows 2008 machines. And what this policy does is force users to only point and print to printers that use package aware drivers. When using package point and print, the client machine will check the driver signature of all the drivers that are downloaded from print servers to ensure that they are in fact authentic. Now, if you do want to enable this policy, just right click on it and choose properties and then set it to enabled. But do be aware that it will only work for Windows Vista and Windows 2008 machines since they're able to use package installation for the drivers, which requires the client to have a local driver store, something that was only introduced back in Windows Vista. Now, the last option we'll look at is to only use package point and print approved servers. And if we right click on this policy and select properties and then choose to enable it, we can enter in a list of approved servers that our clients are able to use. So simply click on add and then enter in the fully qualified domain name and then click on OK. And you can, of course, enter in as many as you like. So if you're able to take advantage of point and print, it's more secure since it means that all of the driver components are downloaded to the client automatically. These drivers will need to be signed and they'll be checked on the client to ensure that they're authentic. Now you can also control which print servers users are able to see and remember though, some of these policies do only work with Windows Vista and Windows 2008 machines. So if you want to enable them, you can do so, but ensure that your group policy object is either targeting users that you know are running Windows Vista or deploy a WMI filter on the policy to ensure that this policy only targets Vista and 2008 machines. Now, the next thing we'll cover in this video is printer shares. But before we get stuck into that, let's quickly go and create a printer, we'll add one to this server. So we'll click on start and we'll go to printers. And I'm going to right click and choose to add a printer. 
Now let's add in a network printer. So we'll choose the bottom option. And the printer I have on my network won't be listed here. So we're going to add in a printer using an IP address and we'll click next. And the IP address of this printer is 10.0.0.10. .0 .0 .10. And we'll leave it here to auto detect. We'll click next. All right. It's found here my HP Color Laser Jet. We can give it a name if we like. I'll leave it as it is and I'll make this our default printer. We'll click next. And now we'll accept the default share name here. We'll click next again and then we'll click finish. Okay. Now, if we go and right click on our printer here, which seems to have a paper jam, but we'll right click anyway and we'll choose properties. And then we'll choose the security tab. You'll note here that the everyone group has access to print to this printer. When you require more than the default security on your printers, you should come in here and remove this everyone group and only add in groups that require access. That way, anyone who's not a member of these groups you add in here will be denied access to this printer. Now, the final thing we want to talk about in this video is relocating the print spooler to another volume. So in our printers window here, we'll come up to the file menu and we'll select server properties. Then on the advanced tab, you can see the default path to the print spooler file and you can change this to point to a different location, which should really be on a different disk if the server's heavily accessed or on a volume that has stringent security requirements so that the print spooler is more secure. Finally, I should also mention that if you've enabled the internet printing feature, then you'll also need to consider securing that as well. Although since this feature relies heavily on the web server role, you should take a look at our video on securing IIS 7, where we'll talk more about web security. In this video, we've looked at ways we can further secure our print servers by implementing SMB signing to digitally sign packets to prevent man in the middle attacks. We also talked about using the point and print policy to automate and secure printers and print drivers. And finally, we discussed protecting print shares and relocating the print spooler for additional performance and security. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we'd like to thank you for supporting Winstructor.